Content creation is harder than your 9 to 5. <laughs> no, little boy, I promise it's not. <laughs> oh, wait, no, wait, you're kidding. He didn't just say what I think he did, did he? <laughs> That's cute. You think creating content is harder than a job. Isn't that adorable? I have a job. I'm a 911 paramedic and a pediatric critical care medic, and I'm a content creator. <laughs> All right, so let's break this down Sesame Street style before I get a nosebleed just thinking about this for too long. So I'm an EMT and I'm a 911 dispatcher, one of which I do for a volunteer organization. The other I do for my 9 to 5, or as the rest of us would probably call it, a 12-hour tour from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And while content creation does definitely have its challenges, especially when you try to slide it into your 9 to 5, do I think that it's more challenging than my day job? No. Well, that took long enough. I get like 15 minutes for lunch and my food took 25 minutes to get here. Why are we doing this? I sit down for two minutes and you guys tag me in the double-sided hot dog of fury. The Halloween House of Horrors double-ended glildo of destruction. I'm starting the ban 3D printers campaign immediately. You guys can't be trusted. That thing looks like a lightsaber from Star Wars. That thing will Darth Maul you and a good buddy of yours from the inside out in like two seconds. That thing's porous. Who knows what kind of polio staphylococcus hybrid's gonna be taking up residency in your backdoor bun warmer if you do that. One day you're fine, the next day your insides look like kraut ketchup and mustard, but not the onions because you don't like the onions even though they're delicious, but God forbid you try something new. But at least you get to go to the hospital with a friend this time. I'm sure the doctor will be thrilled when he checks out your chocolate starfish and it's leaking hot dog flavored water. God, Fred Durst would be spiking his red Yankee hat on the floor if he saw something like this. Tell you what, if I show up on scene and I see that, I'm not cutting that thing in half. I'm going to make you guys transport just like that. Let you explain to the doctor how you happen to be on back-to-back -back swing sets, and this just happened to be in my back pocket, 502. I swear, I don't know. Stop it. Well, please don't turn your rock'em, sock'em, rectum into a backdoor best buddy, glizzy gobbler, and just please don't eat me like this. Where do you find the videos that you react to? They're always hilarious. Well, that's very kind of you to say, and a really good question, and a really cool origin story. But let's talk about it. So when I first started this page, I would scroll TikTok just like I would do any other day, and if I found a really funny video, I'd do a reaction to it. And it would just be that blank stare, the zoom, and just... no. As time went on, I started noticing that I was getting tagged more and more in a lot of these videos. Once that happened, well, obviously I had to give the people what they wanted and I reacted to a bunch of the videos that you guys sent me. Now, I get tagged to the tune of three to 4,000 tags a day. And obviously a lot of the videos are the same. I get tagged multiple times in the same video, but they're always hilarious. They're always great. And if I find just the right one, we're able to do a reaction to it. Now, to be fair, I do look for certain things that I'm going to keep a little hush-hush because I love when you guys tag me in absolutely everything. But for the most part, I have kind of an idea of some of the types of videos that I'm looking for. So a few times a week, I go through all the tags that you send me, and I do mean all of them, and I go through and I hit favorite on my favorite ones. And the ones that I choose, those are the ones that get reaction videos. But just know now, without your shares, your comments, your tags, none of this would be possible now. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, and tag away. My turn. Not really sure what it's my turn for. I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, I'm just over here doing my books, trying to save a little bit of money. Uh, Christmas is coming up, you know, you gotta buy all those presents for all the people you really care about. So I'm just trying to cancel some stuff so I have a little bit of extra money uh, for the holidays. Uh, let's see, we got uh, Netflix. So I'm gonna cancel Netflix, I barely even use it. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. Uh, HBO Max. House of the Dragons isn't anywhere near as good as uh, Game of Thrones was. Uh, so I barely even watch HBO Max anymore. So I think we're gonna cancel that. Uh, what's next? Sleepy Paramedic. Now, I know that was canceled a couple months ago, I think. I don't, I don't really think I have to worry about that. Uh, Hulu. I do like Letterkenny, so I'll probably keep that. No. Well, it's not a stitch, but I got something for you. But uh, let's make sure we do this in a way that everybody understands. Links in bio, but not this one. This one's going to sleep. Try it. Look, you can serve a drink out of yourself. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? 
thought we were friends. Why have you forsaken me? I tried to tap it into the Christmas spirit, but this is ridiculous. It's like a hundred easier ways to bring drinks to your friend's house, and this is what you chose? Maybe you just need some better friends. You sit on that thing, and you're gonna wreck your figgy pudding in like 2.69 seconds. I can see it already. Talk about not having a silent night. More like you're gonna have yourself a merry little trip to the hospital. Yeah, but it's got a flare base. Eh? Yeah, stop it. Best case scenario is you got an easy, medium, and fatality setting on that thing. But at least it's not 3D printed this time, and it's a heck of a lot better than using a Festivus pole, I guess. Shall we begin with the airing of grievances? I tell you, I might not know what wassailing is, but I do know what it isn't, and that's not it. Although, think about all the TV spin-offs that could come off of something like this. I'm in therapy, Charlie Brown. That thing will shatter faster than my hope for humanity at this point. Look, just don't have a glass tree drink dispenser make you have to jingle all the way to the ICU and just please... Don't meet me like this. Fine. Yeah, Crying out loud. Freaking. Get on the freaking thing. Oh, you need it. We need it. Oh, we need it. Crying out loud. She has black glasses, though. I don't have black glasses. Got idea. Huh. Black glasses. They're not black all the way around, but now they are. <laughs> Something wicked, this way comes. <laughs> I think I nailed it. Happy Halloween. What's going on, guys? So after uh, my live yesterday, a lot of people were asking me uh, a little bit of information about what I do for the gym, what I do for my diet, different things like that. And uh, they asked if I would make a little series about it. So sure, why the hell not? Here we go. So for those of you who don't know, I'm coming off a bit of a shoulder injury, and uh, for a while it was really hard for me to stay in the gym. In fact, even just running on the treadmill or being on the stationary bike, anything that made my upper body bounce a little bit was just absolutely painful. Now for EMS, I was able to get through it, but I didn't really want to add anything on top of that and cause it to hurt any more than it really had to. But now we got the green light, so we're back at it three to five times a week, plus making sure that the diet's right. Now as far as the diet goes, I'm back pretty much to a ketogenic diet. I, um, I had really good success with that in the past, so I'm going back to that to uh, try to shed the weight for the summertime. I also calorie restrict. I make sure that I keep my calories below a certain level. Uh, and I also intermittent fast, uh, so I do a 16-8 intermittent fast, uh, which sometimes stretches out to about 18 hours. Then maybe once a week I'll do a 24-hour fast where I just basically drink water for the day, no food. Uh, and that'll help kind of keep that metabolism where it needs to be. So if this is a journey that you guys want to take the ride on, let me know in the comments. Uh, right now I'm sitting at about 203 pounds, which is substantially higher than where I want to be. I want to be in and around 160 to 165. So if you guys want to be along on the journey, let me know in the comments, and I'll keep these videos coming. But we just pulled up to the gym. So thank you guys for all the love, all the support. Let me know if you want to take this ride in the comments. Have an amazing day. Let's get after it. I feel like I should stop for a moment as a doctor and give a small PSA. All right, well, you got my attention, but I'm not optimistic, so let's hear it. Do not put this where it doesn't belong. Do not put this where it doesn't belong. While we're at it, don't put this where it doesn't belong. And this, don't put this where it doesn't belong. Do me a favor and don't put this where it doesn't belong. Or this, or even this little one. I don't care that this is ribbed. Do not put this where it doesn't belong. Not this. Not this. Don't even think about it. <sighs> Definitely not. You'll get a splinter. I just know you'll get a splinter. Anyways, happy holidays. Stay safe out there. Don't put things where they don't belong.
seriously, I got like 16 seconds between calls. Why are we doing this? 502, it's got a flared base. Yeah, the base is the same size as the bottom of the thing. That doesn't count. You see all the souls that thing snatched up, stuck inside that thing? It's probably gonna try to add you to the collection. I get we're all like, this is Halloween, but this is not the time for this. Ronald McDonald will be rolling over in his mustard and ketchup inspired foo foo clown costume if he saw you right now. The freaking Hamburglar would be emotionally compromised. I'd have to get medicated on the psych ward. You can see it now. He's just walking around all day going, rubble, rubble. I swear, if I have to show up to this after you finish your McFlurry and Chicken Nuggies on one of your just exciting Saturday nights, I'm not going to be thrilled. I don't care what time it is. I'll just toss you in the ball pit in the play area and let the next crew have you. Poor Grimace. You want to see a Grimace? Go ahead, do that. You'll see a Grimace. Also, congratulations on finding McDonald's where the McFlurry machine works. It's called the Grimace Shake Challenge. It's not the Grimace Makes a Shake Challenge. Come on, it's a little bit lost in translation there. Just please do me a solid and don't turn that purple people eater into a backdoor unhappy meal. Just please. Don't meet me like this. <sighs> Rob, you stop right now. Dude, you're an EMT. We're supposed to be on the same team. What are you doing? Out here trying to do good things for the people. And you're over here tying my bootstrings together. Like I get it. Thanksgiving's around the corner. But that's not what they're talking about. Yeah, the pilgrims would be smashing each other in the face with Plymouth Rock if they saw you guys right now. It's called the Mate Flower, not the Mate Deflower. One day you're fine. Next day you're pulling out pumpkin spice booty nuggets for the rest of your life. Got tagged in this so many times I might even cancel my own Friendsgiving. Although I guess on the plus side you will be spitting out squash seeds for the next 20 years. So I mean that's good for the environment. So. It'll be like a modern-day Johnny Appleseed. Maybe they'll even write songs and fables about you. Well, I'm pretty sure you'll never be allowed back inside that Whole Foods again. It's called Whole Foods, not Whole Foods. Spelling matters. And don't tell me about a flared base either. That thing's not even flat. It's round. You'll end up rolling down the hill right to the pumpkin patch that thing came from. Look, let's all just try to have a good Thanksgiving and not have to worry about you getting spit-roasted by the Gordo Plenty and just please just... Don't meet me like this. Are those freaking dragon eggs? I told you. I don't know how many times I told you. We need to ban 3D printers. You guys can't be trusted with this kind of technology. Literally gonna mess around, find out, and turn yourself into your very own Shame of Thrones episode. Winter is coming. I swear to God, if I show up on scene and this is what I'm looking at, I'm not even gonna call you by your name. I'm just gonna call you Daenerys Targaryen. Male or female, I don't care. Queen of the Anals. Mother of dragon stuff out of your body. Breaker of booties. Plugger of fart boxes. I'll tell you this for free. If you do that, your day's gonna be about as bad as the last season of that show was. Is that really where you want to be when the White Walkers come back? Not to mention that that thing's porous, man. Who knows what's gonna be laying eggs inside of you. One day you're fine, the next day the Night King's doing donuts in your lower intestine. Well, please do me a favor and don't put that Paint of Thrones inside your House of Dragons and just please... Don't meet me like this. Oh my god, I got a new toy and I'm ready for the chaos. All right, well, I got tagged in this video about 9,000 times. Let's see what the problem is. Um, oh, it probably says it backwards, huh? It says for rectal use only. <laughs> Let's go play. I mean, obviously. The EMT guy's probably gonna get super mad at me because technically I'm condoning you shoving this up your ass. Obviously. Looks like we're going to Target. I've already getting filled with the holiday spirit, but this is ridiculous. There's no way she'd really do this though, right? All right, we made it to the Christmas section. Here goes nothing. Yeah. Come on, I can't believe this. You can't be serious. She's literally everywhere. I gotta go check the other departments. Unbelievable. Come on. This place is literally my own flared base nightmare. I bet you anything, this is why the Target's logo looks like a... Never mind. Probably why it's red, too. Oh, not the produce. Well, I'll give her this. She's determined. 
my shoppers, just beware. There's a foul treasonous plot going on here. I can't stand for it. She's everywhere. Keep your wits about you. And be safe this holiday season. Look at this. Oh, <gasps> perfect. No. Meat chicken versus hot dog, where you need to grab a sling em and flip em. No. Do you mean this EMT guy? He only comes when it's not safe. This is my molar. It's made of glass and it's... Oh, darlings, that is solid borosilicate glass, and it has a very flared base. It's resistant to thermal shock. The same glass as Pyrex. We know the rules. Technically, that had a flared base. I can, I can do a variety of workshops with this. It's designed not to chip or break or shatter, even with extreme temperature changes, even when you bump it on stuff. Captain Buzzkill has no say here. He only comes when it isn't safe. Now go forth, have fun. He's not coming. Maybe. All right, just lay there on your side there for me, Mr. Anderson. How long ago did this happen? Two hours? You laid like this for two hours? Show us around. Try to tell him. Good night to everyone, EMS and Fitness Edition. Hey Paige, thanks for letting me do your thing. Good night to everyone except the people that park at the gym, get in their car, and then never leave their parking spot, bro. Other people need to park in your parking spot. The other parking lot is like two and a half miles away, and I gotta sit here with you with your headlights on, not doing anything for 20 minutes while you sit there and play around with your AirPods. Like, man, it's cold outside. It's the middle of December. I'm not trying to walk from the far parking lot past the near parking lot. Even if you want to stay in the parking lot, just get out of the spot so I don't have to sit here with 600 milligrams of caffeine coursing through my veins like I'm about to rip my steering wheel off. Like the gym is 400 feet from your spot. It's 12,000 miles from the other spot. Can you just get out of the spot? I swear I'd hook him up to the bumper of my car and pull except my car's got like the towing capacity of a Tonka truck. People, if you're in a parking spot, get out of the spot so other people can have your spot. You don't pay rent there. Get out of your spot. I swear this is why I don't go out in the daytime. I just... Do not have the patience for things like this. I'm not built for this. What's going on, everybody? So a lot of people have been asking me about my fitness journey, my fitness updates. So let's talk about it. As you can see right up here, the newest weigh-in, and that's from this morning, was 193.7, so we're down about 16 pounds, so I'm really stoked about that. We're pushing down to 165, so let's talk about what we're doing. Now, before we get into it, it's important to notice that progress is not linear. This does not happen all in one shot. You have ups and downs and peaks and valleys, and it's important to make sure that you keep your right frame of mind and remember why you're trying to lose that weight or trying to get to that shape. So I've been keeping a really strict ketogenic diet, and I've been making sure to keep my macros very, very strict. I've also been calorie restricting a bit to make sure that I have my food intake exactly where I want it. On top of that, I make sure to fast every single day. I do a 16 hour fast. I use the Zero app to make sure that I keep it exactly how I want. It's easy to track and I make sure that you stay right on focus and get your fast done in the most effective way possible. It's also really nice to get like daily rewards sometimes. And that just makes you feel good. I'm also at the gym three to five times a week and I work with a trainer once a week. That is gonna be content on the YouTube channel. And I highly suggest you take a trip over to the YouTube and follow that. The link is in my beacons. Go check it out. Thank you guys for taking this ride with me. I genuinely appreciate it. It means the absolute world to me having you along for the ride with us. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for the love and the support. Guys, work hard. Be kind always. Do not forget to tell somebody that you love them. And we'll see you on the other side of 165. Let's get after it.
what's going on guys so we're making our first trip over to the p.o box since we made that video about donating over to the food bank i'm insanely excited to go pop into that p.o box see how many cards came in so far so we can start getting a running tally of how much we're going to be donating over to the food bank let's go check it out all right now we're going to go check it out because the first time i forgot my key i'm not perfect all right here we go let's go check this bad boy out bang God, this is hard to do on a camera. Yeah. Here we go. Very cool. Oh my God, there's a slip in there. You guys know what the yellow slip means. Time to go check out the counter. All right, guys, so I turned the cards around to protect the innocent, but we've got six cards plus this nice big dense envelope full of something. We're gonna open these up on live. We're gonna do it a couple days before Christmas, so this way we have a chance for everybody to get their cards. And guys, thank you so much for submitting cards over to us so we can take care of the local folks here in our community. Have an amazing rest of your day. Let's get after it. I feel like I should stop for a moment as a doctor and give a small PSA. All right, well, you got my attention, but I'm not optimistic, so let's hear it. Do not put this where it doesn't belong. Do not put this where it doesn't belong. While we're at it, don't put this where it doesn't belong. And this, don't put this where it doesn't belong. Do me a favor and don't put this where it doesn't belong. Or this. Or even this little one. I don't care that this is ribbed. Do not put this where it doesn't belong. Not this. Not this. Don't even think about it. Definitely not. You'll get a splinter. I just know you'll get a splinter. Anyways, happy holidays. Stay safe out there. Don't put things where they don't belong. Where is the paramedic TikTok guy when we need him? Late. He's running late for work. That's where he is. God, it's giving me like two seconds. My God. All right, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Let's go. Are we even having this conversation? Like, do you see the size of that thing? I think it'll turn you from a happy, healthy human being to a spooky, scary skeleton in like two and a half seconds. I'll give you your very own nightmare before Christmas. Yeah, Jack and Sally would be so mad at you right now. Don't you see the face he's making in that video? I'm telling you, your face will stick like that for the rest of your life. Has your mom ever told you that? You make that face, it's going to stay like that for the rest of your life? That's what's going to happen. Don't you know those things are basically hollow? The good news is you could be the centerpiece on the Thanksgiving table, which is probably the only way you're getting invited anyway. On the plus side, I imagine every time I hit a bump, you're probably going to get a really cool hollow sound, like if you're going to throw a rock into a cave. I think that'd be kind of cool. Also, by the way, that thing grows on the ground. Who the hell knows what kind of creepy crawlers are going to be laying eggs inside you? One day your belly hurts, next thing venom's dragging you around by your booty hole all over the city. Warning, may cause intestinal issues. Yeah, like it might remove your intestines. And don't tell me you fell on it either. The only way you're falling on that thing is if you're running naked through a veggie patch and take a tumble down a hill. Honestly, at that point, you probably deserve it. Look, please don't use that veggie tail to ruin your perfectly intact cabbage patch. And just please, just don't need me like this. <laughs> Come on. I get like 10 minutes to take a nap and this is what you people do to me. All right, give me a second to get ready. All right, that's better. Where were we? Oh, you see the ridges on that thing? I think it'll give you a backdoor booty lobotomy in like 2.5 seconds. Well, 502, technically that has a flared base. Yeah, until that thing crumbles like the cave of wonders and gets stuck in your cave of blunders. Let's break this down. That thing has sections. Sections mean pieces. That means any part of that can get snapped off in your 3D poop printer and cause a serious paper jam. How much you want stuck in there? One knuckler? Two knuckler? Is there such thing as a three knuckler? If you get that reference, I'll be impressed. And it's porous too. Who knows what's laying eggs inside that thing? 
mess around and catch yourself the first case of polio in like 45 years. When people say go F yourself, that's not what they're talking about. Just because you decided it was a good idea to buy a 3D printer on Newegg doesn't mean I should have to deal with the repercussions of it. Just promise me you're not going to use a 3D printed bird in your backdoor birdhouse and just please don't make me like this. Oops. Sir, you can't park here. Oops. Sir, you can't park here. Funniest moment with the trainees is probably back in the day we used to take <laughs> we used to take our trainees stuff like they used to wear like the utility belt and uh we would zip tie all their stuff to the to the utility belt. So like they would go to like pull their shears out and they couldn't, or they'd go to pull out like their pulse socks that they had it on their belt and they couldn't uh Actually they did that to me. So I don't do them at the same time. I'm an EMT and I'm a 911 dispatcher, so depending on what job I'm doing that day, that's what I do. Well, I'm really lucky to have a pretty amazing support system at home as well as at my job. Everybody's just really incredible. So if you ever need somebody to talk to, they're always there for you. Um, I like to hike. I like to go to the gym and just relax. I like to hang out with my pups. They make things better all the time. They don't even realize it. I feel like you're missing an option. So I have been an EMT going on a little over three years. Uh, I've been working with my department for five years. I was a uh, probation I remember for a little while and then COVID hit and it's just a whole big thing once COVID hit. So I've been officially an EMT for a little over three years. I just did my recertification. Things in life do not get easier. Things in life change. And the experiences that you use during times that were difficult make the things you're going through now easier. She found this thing at the store. Apparently, you just take the dog's dirty paw and just cram it into the hole. Hmm. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. There we go. It's my day off, but I got time for this. Paw cleaner. All right, yeah, okay, paw cleaner. That thing looks more like a baby batter protein shaker to me. I've heard people say things tickle their fancy, but I don't think that's what they were talking about, man. Things getting a little lonely on the rig, huh? That's, I get it, man. Late nights, long nights, I get it. See, I think there's a little miscommunication. See, most first responders carry a flashlight with them, not a... Never mind. Just be careful, man. Mama told me that too much uh, paw washing can make you go blind, so just be careful. Mud buster. You better keep that thing away from your mud buster. <laughs> mud buster. For when booty calls. I just wouldn't exactly recommend taking that thing for any long romantic walks on the beach, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you know, I think I'm pretty sure I speak for all EMTs when I say just don't. Do it! Do it! Do it, you won't! Do it! I double dog dare you! <laughs> All that work and what did it get me? Why did I do it? Oops. Sir, you can't park here.
not sure if this has been asked, but what in specific terms is your profession? Also, why did you get into said profession? It's a good question, and one that might be a little vague, seeing as how I post a lot of different types of content on here. So let's talk about it. So my actual profession is I am a 911 emergency medical dispatcher. That's what keeps my lights on, right? So what that actually entails is I am able to dispatch police, fire, EMS to any type of call that they might be warranted at. In order to do that, you need to have at least your 911 telecommunicator certification and your emergency medical dispatch certification. The emergency medical dispatch certification being something that you need to take CEU classes in order to maintain. Now, I'm also a volunteer EMT, and I chose to stick with volunteer because I feel like it's a great way to give back to my community, and I just feel like it's the right thing for me to do. It's just one of those things that I always wanted to do growing up. I used to see the trucks go flying by just like any other kid. They used to want to be a part of it, and now I get to walk in line with them, and that's a really good feeling. But as to why I truly got into both of them is because of one phrase that I heard while I was growing up, and that service to others is the rent we pay for our room here on Earth. It is our obligation as good members of society take care of those around us. And that's why I got into it. So you can best believe that if you need a 911 response and I answer the phone, or if you need a 911 response and I'm driving the truck, I got you. How can I become an EMT? I've seriously been considering it for a career. Well, good for you. It's a noble profession. Let's talk about it. So I can only really speak for how you can become one in New Jersey because that's where I'm certified, but let's break it down and see exactly the different ways you can do it. The way I think is personally the easiest is align yourself with a volunteer organization who is willing to put you through EMT school. You end up having usually a little bit of an obligation towards them afterwards, but you know what? Small price to pay. You're going to be doing it anyway. You may as well get your schooling done for free, your CEUs done for free, and then just not have to worry about it. That's the route that I took. I started volunteering with a local organization and I haven't looked back. I don't have a single regret. My obligation time has concluded with them and I have no intention on leaving. Another way to do it is obviously you can just put yourself through EMT school. It's usually between $13 to $1,600. That wasn't a commitment that I was willing to make. So I went with my volunteer organization and I have not had a single regret. Once you obtain your certification, you can obviously just apply to any department and if they're hiring and you go through the process and it goes through, you get hired on as an EMT there. Also your town fire departments, if it's a paid department and you go through the civil service process, a lot of towns are fire EMTs or fire medics, and they'll take care of all that for you as well. Me personally, I think joining a volunteer organization to start is probably the easiest way to do it because it saves you the financial burden, and you don't have to worry so much about not knowing anything going in because you're gonna have on the job training before you go in. And trust and believe, once those trainers get a hold of you, we got you. How can I become an EMT? I've seriously been considering it for a career. Well, good for you. It's a noble profession. Let's talk about it. So I can only really speak for how you could become one in New Jersey because that's where I'm certified, but let's break it down and see exactly the different ways you could do it. The way I think is personally the easiest is align yourself with a volunteer organization who is willing to put you through EMT school. You end up having usually a little bit of an obligation towards them afterwards, but you know what? Small price to pay. You're going to be doing it anyway. You may as well get your schooling done for free, your CEUs done for free, and then just not have to worry about it. That's the route that I took. I started volunteering with a local organization and I haven't looked back. I don't have a single regret. My obligation time has concluded with them and I have no intention on leaving. Another way to do it is obviously you can just put yourself through EMT school. It's usually between $13 to $1,600. That wasn't a commitment that I was willing to make. So I went with my volunteer organization and I have not had a single regret. Once you obtain your certification, you can obviously just apply to any department. And if they're hiring and you go through the process and it goes through, you get hired on as an EMT there. Also your town fire departments, if it's a paid department and you go through the civil service process, a lot of towns are fire EMTs or fire medics, and they'll take care of all that for you as well. Me personally, I think joining a volunteer organization to start is probably the easiest way to do it because it saves you the financial burden, and you don't have to worry so much about not knowing anything going in because you're going to have on the job training before you go in. And trust and believe, once those trainers get a hold of you, we got you. How can I become an EMT? I've seriously been considering it for a career. Well, good for you. It's a noble profession. Let's talk about it. So I can only really speak for how you can become one in New Jersey because that's where I'm certified. But let's break it down and see exactly the different ways you can do it. The way I think is personally the easiest is align yourself with a volunteer organization who is willing to put you through EMT school. You end up having usually a little bit of an obligation towards them afterwards. But you know what? Small price to pay. You're going to be doing it anyway. You may as well get your schooling done for free, your CEUs done for free, and then just not have to worry about it. That's the route that I took. I started volunteering with a local organization and I haven't looked back. I don't have a single regret. My obligation time has concluded with them and I have no intention on leaving. Another way to do it is obviously you can just put yourself through EMT school. It's usually between $13 to $1,600. That wasn't a commitment that I was willing to make. So I went with my volunteer organization and I have not had a single regret. 
once you obtain your certification, you can obviously just apply to any department and if they're hiring and you go through the process and it goes through, you get hired on as an EMT there. Also your town fire departments, if it's a paid department and you go through the civil service process, a lot of towns are fire EMTs or fire medics and they'll take care of all that for you as well. Me personally, I think joining a volunteer organization to start is probably the easiest way to do it because it saves you the financial burden and you don't have to worry so much about not knowing anything going in because you're going to have on the job training before you go in. And trust and believe, once those trainers get a hold of you, we got you. How does Badge 502 unwind between your job and these awesome videos? Well, thank you for thinking that the videos are awesome. That's really cool of you. And it's a really good question. Let's talk about it. So whether you've been in the job for 10 days or 10 years, stress is a real thing and you do need to make sure that you have a way to take care of yourself because you cannot pour from an empty cup in this job. I personally have drawn a very thick line in the sand between when I am working and when I am not and I make sure to take care of myself in that in-between time. The old phrase, if you don't choose to make time for your wellness, you'll be forced to make time for your sickness is very real. So you have to make sure that you take care of yourself. Me personally, I like to hike with my dogs take them out to the park, let them have a great time, or we'll go to the dog park and just let them run around and I'll just have a good time watching them have fun. I also have a couple motorcycles, so if I decide I want to jump on the bike, take it out for a nice long ride in the country, hit the twisties, have a good time, always safe, all the gear all the time. During the summer, I'm a big beach guy, so I like to go to the beach and just kind of stop for a little bit and just mellow out. I do like to take rides in the car, I'll throw the music on, blast it real loud, drop the top, just cook it through the mountains, have a great time. Just kick back, relax, enjoy myself. And everything involving this channel, whether it's the videos here or on Instagram or when we're streaming live, all these things are just easy ways to just take yourself out of that mental work focus and just return your right to square. Just remember that you are the only you that you have. Make sure you take care of yourself. This guy's good, man. He's gonna make sure that the concrete grows really, uh, really good in the off season. You gotta water it at least three times a day, you know. Otherwise, you're not gonna get the growth that you want in the springtime. So, you know, it's important. You know, one of the best parts about working here, we got all this beautiful scenery. We got like beautiful paths and like a beautiful overview. Look at the mountain view. Well, it's not really a mountain view, it's an awful building, but whatever. And then you've got like, you look over here, you got this babbling brook over here. Like, look at this babbling brook. Like it's, uh, 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 uh babbling brook. Heck yeah, pretty as shit. Where is your emergency? What do you mean you can't be there anymore? Where are you? You're at the hospital. Where are you trying to go? Home. Um, that's not how this works. 911 only goes in one direction. Okay? Yeah, right. Try Uber. Bye bye. Do you or do you not feel bonita? I feel bonita. Wonderful, because you look bonita. Uh. Sorry. Uh, didn't mean to stare. How's it doing? I just barely see your elbow bend. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Johnson, we're, wait, what was I going to say? How did I want to phrase that? All right, Mrs. Johnson, you're doing fantastic, okay? We're going to get to the hospital in just a little... No, nah, I don't like that. I don't like that. Crown, we're going to get... Rob, where's the old beacon? We're going to start to get going. Right, yeah. Just take your time. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, my God. Right around? <laughs> Look at all that shit. <clears throat> Quiet on the side! <laughs> I'm gonna start breathing today, okay? Uh, today? Today? Rob, where's the OB kit? 
do they get this coming? Okay, we're gonna do great. Ow. Oh no, I think I broke his leg. <laughs> oh my knee. I was gonna say, where's the birth control? Oh no. Where's the birth control? I got it! I got it! Boom. <laughs> Yes, hello. I was supposed to get a delivery of love and affection. Where the fuck is it? That's just my baby dog. 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 A new invention called the hot dogger. There it is. I feel like I don't want you to watch me oh, while I, I do go. this. Please don't do that. Just trying to see what it would feel like if I were the bun. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about that. There we go. Let's get to work. I mean, I know hot dogs aren't exactly good for your insides, but this is ridiculous. That thing will have your insides looking like kraut ketchup and mustard with one good twist. I don't know what the best thing in the world for your gut biome is, but I'm pretty sure it's not removing it. That thing could stop the airflow on the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile's gas hole. Imagine what it could do to yours. That's all I need to do is show up at 3 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday night because somebody decided to use the glizzy gutter of destiny the way it's not supposed to be. And all you guys with the 3D printers, I see you. Stop it. Next thing you know, Cotton Candy Randy's going to show up and be like, Happy Cotton Candy Day, daddies! And look over at Rat and whisper sweet nothings into his ear. And, and just look over to Link and just be like, Ugh. Look, please just don't use the yellow twisty glizzy gutter to make your insides look like a melted nutter butter and just please just don't leave me like this.